Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Sunday morning. Uh, hopefully everything is well with you as we continue to read. This is David. Uh, you probably said, yes, we know your name is David. <laughs> uh, anyhow, I'm just being silly a little. Um, hope this uh, message finds you blessed this morning. And, uh, and um, whatever time you're watching it, the morning, evening, noon, um, Thank you for following along with me um, in this commentary or study of God's Word, this reading. Uh, we're in chapter, uh, I believe it's chapter 40, 44 today. Um, yeah, chapter chapter 44. You know, I just, I love showing you these, uh, these beautiful, um, it looks like this one's kind of like maybe painted. Uh, but even if it's painted, it's it's brushed. Somebody did an awesome job painting this paint. I mean, if this is a painting, it looks like it is. It looks like it's been airbrushed. Maybe reality airbrushed a little. But I just love beauty. I love God's creation. As you notice, uh, you know, I, I don't do the normal, um, what do you call it, YouTube uh I was doing that before. I might do it again, you know, the the ones that catch your attention or this and that, you know, to get more views. Um, and so I'm just doing regular, uh, beautiful, natural pictures. I mean, and because I love, I love beauty. I love God's creation. Amen. His, there's some very beautiful places here on this earth. I mean, he's made some some awesome beaches and, and coves and and uh, uh, rock formations and it's just so much you know I get a different one every day on my on my the screen on the background and and I, I believe Microsoft also just puts a natural uh, beauty on, on when you open up the well at least when I open up my computer so um but yeah these pictures are amazing uh maybe i'll st I, I love taking pictures i do take pictures myself so maybe i'll start uh putting up my own uh photography uh for the backgrounds um but yeah i mean that's why i do it though because it's the lord's creation it's the lord's creation and there's so much beauty in this world different places in the world oh what a dream that would be, you know, to actually visit all these beautiful places in the world, you know. Um, that's that's like a big dream to me. That's like the, one of the biggest uh, dreams that I have, you know. it's I call it a dream because, you know, we could always dream about traveling the world. Um, is it going to happen? Probably not. <laughs> is it possible? Yes. But, you know, with this COVID and all this going on, it's just makes it really hard uh, but anyhow and and you know financially wise and all that anyhow but there's some beautiful amazing beaches and uh just mountains and just every, just everything it's just so much beauty so that's why i put these uh meanwhile i'm talking i i'd rather you look at the beauty of creation than my my ugly mug <laughs> so um and so uh, we continue today, and like I said, chapter uh, 44 of Isaiah. Um, I just want to thank you if you've been joining me, if you've been following along. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm no scholar. I, I just like to make comments and commentaries, and I'm always learning. Uh, and so I just enjoy reading. Like I said once again, I, I enjoy reading the Lord's Word. Um, I know a lot of, I don't know, I, I'm just going to tell you, I just enjoy reading God's word. So, uh, without further ado, let's, let's get into prayer and, uh, and we'll start chapter, uh, 44 of Isaiah. Amen. Uh, dear heavenly father, as we come before your holy presence, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, yes, God of Israel, blessed be your holy name, Yehovah. Yeshua, Ruach HaKodesh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all in one, blessed be you, Creator God, Creator of the universe and everything in it, blessed be you, Father. As we come to you before your holy throne, Lord, we ask you, Holy Spirit, 
to uh, guide us through your holy scriptures, guide us through what you spoke through the prophets. Teach us, Lord Father God, and show us, be a light unto our feet, and show us which way to go. Um, be Lord of our lives. Uh, continue to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Continue to help us to discern. Continue to give us wisdom uh, of your word, Lord Father God, and understanding. Uh, continue to speak to us, Lord Father God, through your word. Uh, continue to speak to us, Lord, and show us your body, your church, on what we should do, Lord Father God. Give us direction. You are our shepherd. Please, Holy Spirit, give us your direction. I'm talking about your body in this entire earth, Lord Father God, your church, Lord Father God. For you are the Godhead, we are the body. Bring us, Lord Father God, into unity, Lord. Please, Lord Father God, I pray earnestly, like I did this morning, for unity in the body of Christ. No more divisions. No more divisions. Please, Lord Father God, allow us to get along, especially the church. Please, Lord Father God, teach us and bring us together to work together as one. We need to, we need to work together as one, Lord. We need to stop with all the foolishness and all the divisions and all the disagreements. We need to come together as a body, Lord. So please teach us your word. Teach us, Father. I know you did already, my Lord Yeshua. I know you came down and I know you taught us and you modeled what and how we should be with each other. You showed us, Lord Jesus, how to act with each other, how to be with each other. Because all we have as believers, born again believers that love you, all we have is each other. So allow us to be your shining light together in unity from every tribe, country, and tongue. From every tribe, country, and tongue. From all over this earth that you created, Lord. This beautiful earth that you created. Let us, Lord Father God, shine your light and allow us to be your salt that gives flavor to a darkened world, Lord. Thank you, Lord Father God, once again, as we read your word and what you spoke through your prophets, please teach us, Lord, in this time we have to spend with you. And I pray all these things for all my brothers and sisters who are listening and to anyone who is listening. In your holy name, Yeshua, in your name, my Lord, God, and King, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so there's a reason why I prayed with such intensity um, in the spirit about unity, about no the divisions, especially within the body of Christ. I know it hurts the Lord when there's such division within the body of Christ, within the body of believers. There's only one word of God. There's only one Bible, per se, you want to say, um, manuscripts, teachings of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, our Savior. And... It's, it hurts to see divisions and fighting and contention within the body of Christ. Catholics separating Christians, fighting disagreements, division, it's it's a shame it's 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 it shouldn't be and the lord came down i believe that's one of the reasons that he came down and he walked amongst us he modeled himself on how we should 
be with each other. He called the disciples and showed them how to live with each other, how to treat each other. And today we see so much contention. And I believe the enemy, of course, is behind it. What better thing than to turn brothers and sisters against each other that believe in in the Lord, believe in God. And so my prayer was that we get along out of love, you know, and, and, and I know that's what the Lord would want. And I know it might sound impossible, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, anything's possible, amen? And so, I pray for the entire body of Christ who believes in Christ from every race, from every tribe, from every tongue, from every ethnic background. That's why we have one common thing. We have the Word of God. We have the Gospels. We have the entirety of the Bible from beginning to the end. We have what He spoke through the prophets. We have what He spoke when He was here on earth. He gave us the entirety of the word. There is no excuse for not reading it and not taking it word word for word of what he spoke. There is no excuse. If you call yourself a believer and you believe and you are a believer, there is no excuse why, why we should be fighting against each other. There is no excuse. We have that same Bible that's why he left it to us, to read it, to study it, to see what he says through the scriptures. He left us the law. He left us the Torah. He left us how to conduct ourselves, especially with each other. When others see, other, but when people who do not believe they see us fighting amongst each other. That's like a big turnoff to them. A lot of unbelievers look at the religious believers, Christians, fighting each other. So when an unbeliever sees this, he's like, and I want to be a part of that? We are to be salt into the world. Salt. And there's some, some good, honest people that, that don't believe in God. And they're like, well, I don't want to be a part of them. But look at that. They're bickering with each other. They're fighting with each other. They're, 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 they're separated. Look at what's going on. And it shouldn't be like that. They should be attractive, attracted to us. So that's that's just thank you for allowing me to just voice my opinion. That's my opinion, and my prayer goes out to Catholics, to believers in general. I don't like putting that label on it like that. But just to get along, to start learning from God's Word, for unity, for unity and peace and love. To study His Scriptures, to know what He's telling us. Amen. Okay, so Isaiah 44, verse 1. Uh, but now listen to me, Jacob, my servant, Israel, my chosen one, the Lord who made you and helps you, 
says, Do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant. O dear Israel, my chosen one. You can't get around this either. And, and I just want to comment one more comment because I didn't mention Jews. Orthodox Jews or Jews that don't believe in Messiah and then how they look at Christians too and then there's a, a discern, there's a division there's division and the Lord Jesus came and he spoke Jesus was a Jew Jesus was Jewish and he spoke to the religious leaders how they were treating others When it should have been about love. The law is good. Yes, the law is good. But without love for everyone, then it is dead. He came to show that. He's creator of every race, you want to say. Every human being. No matter what color, no matter what, it doesn't matter. He, human beings are his creation. And so I mentioned Jacob too, because he chose Jacob. He created Israel. He showed himself through them. Not to keep it to themselves. Anyhow. Verse 2. The Lord who made you and helps you says, Do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant. O dear Israel, my chosen one. For I will pour out my water to quench your thirst. Now, anybody that has anything against the Jew any animosity, any envy, because it, it is what it is. We should be grateful. Grateful. That he chose a people to express himself. All the scriptures, the rabbis. If God wouldn't have chose Israel... I said this in other videos, then we wouldn't have the Word of God. We wouldn't have the manuscripts that we have that now are being translated into every dialect, every language. God's Word. He chose them. So we do not envy them. We are to be drawn to them because God used them, God chose them to express Himself. They are vessels that He chose to express Himself, to show Himself. A special people to convey to us. Remember that. He chose them. And if you're a Jew, then know this, that He used you to express Himself to us. But no one is higher than anyone. No one is above their teacher, their master. Their master is not above the servant. There's scripture that says this. He is our servant. He is our, our shepherd. He is our Lord. He is above all of us. We are no better than each other. Catholics are no better than Jews, and Jews are no better than Catholics, and Catholics are no better than Christians. Christians are no better than Catholics. It doesn't work that way. He tried to express this. Stop it, he said. It hurts him. 
As believers, it hurts him to see this dissension, this divide. Imagine, just for a second, just for a second, imagine, just imagine if all the walls fell down, the divisions between Catholics and Christians and Jews and Orthodox rabbis and Messianic rabbis. Imagine if the division fell down, if those walls just came down. And unity was established amongst us. Imagine the light we can shine as one body. Imagine. I know that's very hard to imagine because there is so much division. But we should be one body under God under the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, under Yeshua, one body. But just imagine that. Imagine. That would be so beautiful. <laughs> that would be so awesome to say the least. Well, it's going to be that way. But it's going to take for him, our shepherd, to come. To shepherd us physically here. That's what it's going to take. He's going to shake the earth. I'm telling you, he's going to shake the earth. Especially among his body of believers. He's going to put us in check. All of us. To serve one another, to be a family under Him in unity. You know, that old adage, that old saying always it keeps coming to my mind what would Jesus do? What would Yeshua do? How would he act with others? How would he how 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 did he act with others? If he was here today, how would he act amongst people, amongst others? So I want to bring that back. What would Jesus do? If you're thinking, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus put down that Catholic? Would that Catholic put down Christians? Would the Christian fight, fight that? Would Jesus do that? If you're a rabbi, would, you, would Jesus do that? Well, but they don't believe in Yeshua. Okay, well, well, would God do that? If he was here amongst us. If God is love, would he do that? Fight against each other. I don't think so. So always ask yourself, what would Jesus do? How would he act? What would he think? What would he choose? What would he do? He, he came and modeled himself for us. He, walks, he walked amongst us. He modeled himself. This is how you should be. I'm coming down to show you. The king of the universe, the king of the universe comes down to this earth to show us. We still couldn't get it right. So he's coming again. One last time. He's not going to come again and again and again. He's going to come again. To set things in order. And you can't blame it on the devil. You can't say, well, the devil makes me do it. You can't do that. Because why? Because he tells us what happened. 
He tells us, he gave us forewarning of what the devil did and what those fallen angels done. And what they're about. Descriptions. Anger, lust, all these, uh, the list goes on. I don't know them by heart, but you know what scripture I'm talking about. Dissensions, lust, anger. You know what scripture I'm talking about. It goes on a list. Malice, envy, jealousy. I almost have them memorized. That is of who? The enemy. That is of devil, the devil, Satan. You shall not murder. You shall not covet. Because those are all traits of who? The enemy and what the enemy taught uh, humans. The fallen ones. What they taught humans. The corruption within human humankind. He tells us. So there is no excuse. He told us already, don't do this. Don't try not to do this, 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 and this. Fight against it. Resist it. And then he gave us the fruits of the Spirit. Kindness, love. Unity. <laughs> I'm going to throw that one in there. I don't think it's in there, but I'm going to throw that one in there. To the church. It's written. His word is written. There's no excuse. Verse 2. The Lord who made you and helps you says, do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant. O dear Israel, my chosen one. You know, I, I got this, these things coming to me right now. I just, I know I want, I want to get to verse three, but I just got to express them. Okay. Now I've been, I've been reading and praying about our persecuted brothers and sisters. I know you've been listening to me. Okay. The, the body of Christ who is suffering the most. We need to pray for them. We need to not turn a blind eye on them. Because what comes to me is, okay, that day comes and you don't want the Lord telling you, oh, you know, I never knew you. Because we live in some places in the West, in some places where it's very, it's very, it's very calm, it's very peaceful. But the areas that he walked in, which is Israel and the surrounding nations, it's all right there. That's like the epicenter. That's where he's going to return. Well, we got suffering brothers and sisters over there. And he's going to tell us, what, what happened? What would you do over there? What, what, did you help them? You believers over here, did you help them? Did you pray for them? However you can. We are called to help the entirety of the body of Christ. Amen. Always think of it like that. The full body. doesn't matter what race you are. The full body of Christ. There's believers in every continent, in every country, in every, in every... There's believers all around this earth. That's one body. Amen. For I will pour out my water... Verse 3, to quench your thirst and to irrigate your parched fields. And I will pour out my spirit on your descendants. 
and my blessing on your children. Okay, and one other thing I know, I know there's believers out there that are helping, that do pray. Good, good, very good. That pray for each other, that pray for unity, that pray and that love each other. Good. Because we all want to get, when we stand before the Lord and the Lord says to us, Thank you, good and faithful servant. you done, you done well. That's what we want to hear. Good and faithful servant, you've done well. The Lord telling us, I'm proud of you. Yes. Yes. That's what we want to hear in that day. So love each other, respect each other. Verse 3, For I will pour out my water to quench your thirst and to irrigate your parched fields. Once again, this is that miracle. This is when, this is when he waters everything, his parched fields. He's already begun that, okay? And I will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your children. They will thrive like watered grass like willows on a riverbank. This is end times also. This is the outpouring of His Spirit. This is the change in the hearts. I'll remove that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I call it the upgrade, the resurrection, whatever you want to call it. Resurrect, new resurrected bodies, new hearts. We've read other verses that pertain to this. I will pour out my Spirit, His Holy Spirit, on your descendants. You'll no longer need to teach each other because I will put it in your hearts. I will write it on your hearts. They will thrive like watered grass, like willows on a riverbank. Some, would, some will proudly claim, I belong to the Lord. Others will say, I'm a descendant of Jacob. Some will write the Lord's name on their hands and will take the name of Israel as their own. Amen? Amen. And here we go. I'm just going to read it, okay? This is the Lord's word, not mine. So anybody who hears this, don't say, well, David, no. You take it up with God. You take it up with the Lord. I'm just voicing it. I'm just going to read it. I'm not even going to comment. I made comments in my last video. This is what it says. The foolishness of idols. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. It's not what David says or Jim says or Susan says or, 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 or Maria says or, or no. So take a, a personal name out of this. Look at it like that because this is what the Lord says. This is what God Almighty says. Israel's King and Redeemer. This is what the Lord says. Israel's King and Redeemer. The Lord of Heaven's armies. I am the first and the last. There is no other God. Let me, before I'm going to just read through this, let me just, I, I, once again, red letters, okay? You know in your Bibles you have the New Testament. It says that red letters, this is what Jesus spoke. Our Lord God and Savior. Yeshua, King, Savior, Redeemer. This is the Old Testament. I wish that they would make red letters. A Bible with red letters where God spoke in the Old Testament. Because it's Him. It's always been Him. 
king of the universe, Yeshua. He's always been on his throne. He came down, died, was crucified, rose on the third day, was crucified, buried, rose on the third day, went back up. This is him. So I wish, I, that's one thing, I may have mentioned it to a brother of mine, hey, we should make a Bible, they should make a Bible with red lettering. You know, and I thought about it, maybe I can just do it myself. Make my personal Bible, print the pages wherever he speaks through the Old Testament, print my own Bible and make it red ink every time he speaks. Because it's hard to get a Bible uh, publisher to do it. But this is him. That would make it so much easier. Okay, because they say, okay, when Jesus spoke in red letters, this is when Jesus spoke. So if we believe the Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one, which it is, it goes over this over and over and over. The Trinity, it's, it's, it's all throughout the Bible. Then they should make red letters in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Red letters, the whole thing, it's Him. That would cut out a lot of confusion, right? It's Him. But how? <laughs> it's Him. Unique, awesome, king of the universe. Remember, don't put him in a box. How can he be three in one? <laughs> He's God. He's God. How are you gonna how are you gonna tell somebody how can he do that? You're gonna put him in a box? He can't be three. What do you think he can't be three? He made the universe. <laughs> and he can't be three in one? Come on now. The whole Bible talks of it. Amen? I just thought I'd throw it. Okay, well, let's get through the scriptures. Amen? This is what the Lord says. Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord of Heaven's armies. I am the first and the last. There is no other God. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Just It just keeps coming to me. No, let me not apologize because I believe it's a spirit telling me to tell you this. Okay? <laughs> Uh, it says, I am the first on that. There is no other God. Where do we find that at? Those who say, no, no, no. That's, uh, Jesus is not, no, no. Jesus is not God. God is not Jesus. Jesus is not God. Don't believe in the Trinity. Okay. So it says, I am the first and the last. Where do we find that? In the book of Revelation. I I I'll take you there. You want, you want me to take you there? I'll take you there. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's 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 fix this. I am the first. Let me see, because I don't know it by heart. Okay, sorry. Uh, you know about my memory. I am uh, I am the first. Okay, and the last, and the last. Okay, Revelation. <laughs> oh man, maybe I could have done it a different way, right? Uh, Revelation. Okay, so I'm going to just do it like that. Don't mind me, okay? What does it say right here? Okay, let's go to Bible Hub. Okay, uh, NLT. Okay, I'm going to go to NLT because I like NLT and it makes it bigger. Thank you very much. Um, uh, look, I'm coming soon. Look, I am coming soon. Red letters. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in this book. Amen? Okay. Where is it at? It's towards... It's where it says, yes, I'm coming. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I think I passed it up. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, my goodness. Where is it at? Okay, hold on. Okay, here we go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Red letters, okay? Look, look, I am coming soon. This is okay. We, we're all aware that this is Jesus talking, right? This is Jesus, red letters, okay? And this is Old Testament, okay? I am the first and the last. There is no other God, okay? And then we go, this, okay, this is Old Testament. Remember, this is New Testament. Look, I'm coming soon, bringing my reward with me to, to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Okay, so 
uh, to you, uh, you know who you are, maybe even JWs, okay, uh, which don't believe in the Trinity, they don't believe Jesus is God, God is Jesus, okay, they don't believe that, okay, well, right here, we got the Old Testament, remember, Old Testament, right, I am the first and the last, there is no other God, okay, we got the New Testament, this is Jesus speaking, Jesus speaking, remember, Look, I am coming soon, bringing my, my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. What does it say? Verse 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is He. He is He. One and the same, and the Spirit. Amen? Okay, so that's why I said they should put all these letters in red where He speaks. That would be less confusing, right? <laughs> Amen. Uh, I'm just being a little sarcastic. Uh, um, you know, uh, just trying to get a point across. Okay, let's finish this because we're, we're going way too long now, okay? Okay, I am the first and the last. There is no other God. Who is like me? Here we go. Let him step forward and prove to you his power. Who is like me, he says. Let him step forward. And prove to you his power. This goes out to everyone. Okay, bring it on, he's saying. Bring it on. Tell him to step forward. Let him do as I have done since ancient times. When I established a people and explained its future. Who is he talking about? Israel, his people, his chosen ones. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I, did I not proclaim my purposes for you long ago? You are my witnesses once again. Is there any other God? No, there is no other rock. Not one. How foolish are those who manufacture idols. These prized objects are really worthless. The people who worship idols don't know this. So they are all put to shame. Who but a fool would make his own God? An idol that cannot help him one bit. All who worship idols will be disgraced. Along with all these craftsmen, mere humans, who claim they can make a god. They may all stand together, but they will stand in terror and shame. Wow. The blacksmith stands at his forge to make a sharp tool, pounding and shaping it with all his might. His work makes him hungry and weak. It makes him thirsty and faint. Then the woodcarver measures a block of wood and draws a pattern on it. He works with chisel and plane and carves it into a human figure. He gives it human beauty and puts it in a little shrine. He cuts down cedars he selects the cypress and the oak. He plants the pine in the forest to be nourished by the rain. Then he use, uses part of the wood to make a fire. With it, he warms himself and bakes his bread. Then, yes, it's true, he takes the rest of it and makes himself a god to worship. He makes an idol and bows down in front of it. Oof. He burns part of the tree to roast his meat and to keep himself warm. He says, ah, oh, that fire feels good. Then he takes what's left and makes his God, a carved idol. He falls down in front of it, worshiping and praying to it. Rescue me, he says, you are my God. Verse 18, such stupidity 
and ignorance. Their eyes are closed and they cannot see. Their minds are shut and they cannot think. The person who made the idol never stops to reflect. Why, it's just a block of wood. I burned half of it for heat and used it to bake my bread and roast my meat. How can the rest of it be a god? Should I bow down to worship a piece of wood? The poor, deluded fool feeds on ashes. He trusts something that can't help him at all. Yet he cannot bring himself to ask, Is this idol that I am holding in my hand a lie? Amen and amen. Those are God's words. Those are the Lord's words. Amen. Take them to heart. Restoration for Jerusalem. Pay attention, O Jacob, for you are my servant, O Israel. I, the Lord, made you, and I will not forget you. I have swept away your sins like a cloud. I have scattered your offenses like the morning mist. O oh, return to me, for I have paid the price to set you free. He died on the cross, resurrected. He paid the price. He paid the price. Sing, O oh heavens, for the Lord has done this wondrous thing. Shout for joy, O oh depths of the earth. Break into song, O oh mountains and forests and every tree. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and is glorified in Israel. Let me just add something there. One day, that's where our Lord is going to be, seated on His throne, in Jerusalem, in Israel. Get used to it. Those who listen to this and live in every other part of this earth, doesn't matter where, China, Russia, Mexico, everywhere, all around the earth, doesn't matter what part, United States, all around the earth, the Lord is going to be sitting on his throne in Jerusalem. Get used to that. Because that's where he's going to be. That's where we will be. Amen. This is what the Lord says, verse 24, your Redeemer and Creator. I am the Lord who made all things. I alone stretched out the heavens. Who was with me when I made the earth? I exposed the false prophets as liars and make fools of fortune tellers. I cause the wise to give bad advice, thus proving them to be fools. But I carry out the predictions of my prophets. Let me, re let me repeat that, okay? Verse 26. We are reading the prophets. We are reading from the minor, the major and minor prophets. Why are they so important? Who they tell like some people say, well, why why the prophets? Why? Why are they so important, David? Why why you keep on saying that? The major and minor prophets, David, why you keep on saying that that they're important? This is the Lord speaking, remember? The same Lord that's in Revelation. Red letters, remember? The same Lord. He says, but I carry out the predictions of my prophets. Isaiah, Ezekiel. 
his prophets, Daniel. That's why it's important. Because he spoke through them. He spoke himself. And he hearkened back to the prophets he spoke to. But I carry out the predictions of my prophets. By them, I say to Jerusalem, people will live here again. And to the towns of Judah, you will be rebuilt. I will restore all your ruins. When I speak to the rivers and say, dry up, they will be dry. When I say of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, he will certainly do as I say. He will command, rebuild Jerusalem. He will say, restore the temple. This right here, it was about 200 years before Cyrus came to be. About 200 years before. And that will be for another time and place. Amen. So, prophesying of full full future our future prophesying in those days through prophets like Isaiah so important because in general in, in general he's trying to say in, in just a big picture the big picture what is he trying to tell us what is he trying to tell all of us That he's alive. He's God. He's alive. He's creator of the universe. He knows the beginning from the end. He prophesied these things. Why? To prove himself for his name's sake. The prof it says, restore. The, uh, he will command, rebuild Jerusalem. Re Jerusalem was rebuilt. And it came to pass in those days. He says, I'll do it again. I'm telling you the future. Why? So you can believe in me. That I'm real. That I prophesied that he knows the beginning from the end. To believe in him and every word that he speaks. That's why. To not to forget about him, to know him, to build a relationship with him. He tells us all these things are going to come to pass. And there's a finality. There's a finality. And those who believed, put their trust in him, will be a part of of that kingdom to come, of the new heavens and earth. So important. So important. Thank you once again for joining me on this study and putting up with all my ramble, <laughs> my rambling on listening to my opinions but especially even if you want to take all my opinions out okay read his word that's the most important part i am not important i am just a voice i am just a voice a mouthpiece Speaking his word. That's the importance. It's his word. It's not our words. It's his word. The king of the universe. It's his word. He is the word. That became flesh. He is king. He is Lord. He is creator. So if you take anything from this. Take his word to your heart and understanding and in your mind
Thank you once again. This is your humble servant, your brother in Christ Jesus, Yeshua our Lord. Thank you. Join me tomorrow when we continue in verse in uh, chapter 45. May you have a blessed day. And uh, may the Lord bless you and your families, your marriages, everything, anything, your children, your children's children, your children's children's children, if you're a great, great, great grandma or great, great grandpa or you know what I'm saying. May the Lord bless you and your families and, and uh, have a blessed day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.